On every cruise I've ever been on, I've seen somebody break a cruise rule. Sometimes it's just the type of rule that makes you roll your eyes, but sometimes it can be incredibly dangerous. The worrying thing is, is that most of the people making these mistakes don't even realize that they're doing it. The last mistake in this video, I made myself by accident on my last cruise. I recently took a cruise with the British cruise line Morella and when I came back from that cruise I was talking to one of my friends about the toilet in my cabin. That might seem like a bit of a strange conversation topic but the toilet that I had did act kind of strangely. When you pressed flush sometimes it would do one flush, sometimes it would do two, sometimes it would do three. The cruise ship was from the 1990s and that makes her relatively old by cruise ship standards so it didn't bother me at all and to be honest I would much prefer a toilet that flushed too much rather than a toilet that wouldn't flush. Cruise ship toilets are notorious for breaking and when I told this story to my friend he told me about a cruise he went on recently where he went to the toilet, tried to flush the toilet and it just wouldn't flush. I guess he was embarrassed in that situation because what he did was he just put the lid down on the toilet, went on with his day and he hoped that it would be fixed by the time he came back. I know it sounds silly now, but I think that he just panicked. There are so many things that you can't put down cruise ship toilets, you can't put wipes down there, you can't put tampons down there, you can't put anything other than human waste and toilet paper down cruise ship toilets. I wonder maybe if he put something down there by mistake and was too embarrassed to admit it, but I didn't ask, it's not my place to ask. The thing is, if this happened on land, it wouldn't have really been a big deal, but the way that cruise ship toilets work is that if your toilet breaks, it can break all the toilets in your corridor and even above and below you. They're all linked together. When my friend came back to his cabin, he saw maintenance fixing something a few cabins down from his. His toilet was fixed and it was okay in the end, but every cruise line has a rule that if something is broken, if a guest sees something that is damaged or falling apart, they need to report it to the cruise line. The cruise line obviously wants to fix it before it gets out of control and to just minimize the damage from that problem. Another way the cruise lines try and minimize any possible damage is that they'll often close things like the swimming pools, they'll close things like the rock climbing walls. This is for the good of the guests, but sometimes some people don't respect those rules. This is extra important if it's something that needs to be monitored like a ropes course. If you're somebody who wants to use a ropes course or a rock climbing wall out of hours, best case scenario, you're gonna be in lots and lots of trouble. Worst case scenario, you're gonna end up terribly injured and you're gonna be banned from that cruise line for life. Do not use things out of hours. I took a cruise a few years ago with some friends and I can't remember which cruise line it was exactly, but it was one where the swimming pools closed quite early. Normally on cruise lines, you'll be able to go for dinner and then have an after dinner swim, which is quite nice. But on this cruise line, the swimming pools closed quite early. One of the reasons that many cruise lines will close their swimming pools early is because they don't want people getting drunk and then trying to go for a swim. Your Britishism of the week is how many words we have for drunk here in the UK. If somebody is drunk, you can say that they are pissed, they are plus, they are trolley, they are twatted, they're pajamaed, they're hammered, they're anything you want, just add ED to the end, and it normally becomes a word for drunk. When cruise lines do close the swimming pools, they'll usually put a net over the top of the swimming pool. They may drain out the water, but they may not. The net is not designed to hold the weight of somebody should they fall in. It is just a deterrent and to show people that this swimming pool is closed. I was on the pool deck with my friends and they wanted to go swimming again after closing time. I didn't want to do that. I wasn't comfortable with that. I I made my excuses and I left. My friends did go swimming again after closing time and they were lovely polite people. I don't mean to snitch on them. If they had been told to get out it would have been totally fine. On some cruise lines you will find that there is a lifeguard when the pool is open. Not all cruise lines do have this. People do drown on cruise ships and that is of course more likely out of hours because nobody will be around. I'm usually quite strict on sticking to the rules. I feel like the rules are there for a reason, but this next rule I broke. I mentioned it recently in a YouTube video and I had so many comments that said, I didn't know that this wasn't allowed. I've had people saying that it is allowed and trust me, it is not. Every cruise I've ever been on, I have been told it is written down this thing is not allowed. On most modern cruise ships, the lighting in the cabin is controlled by a switch by the door. When you come into the cabin, you put your cruise card into that switch and then you can use the lights in the room. Other cards usually do work in that switch, but I like to leave my cruise card there so that I know 100% that is where my cruise card is. On most cruise ships, the electricity in the cabin, the plug sockets, the TV usually works in the same way. I recently took a cruise and when we met our room steward, she introduced herself to us and 
and told us that we shouldn't leave anything charging when we were out of the room and if we did it would be unplugged. I have to say on this cruise there were multiple occasions where I forgot to unplug things before leaving the cabin. I was just busy, I just didn't think about it but in the back of my mind I was thinking that as soon as I take that cruise card out by the door the electricity will go off in the cabin anyway. For some reason this didn't happen with a couple of the plug sockets and I only noticed when I would come back to the cabin and find something fully charged where I didn't think that it would have been charging because I was out of the room or I would come back and I would find all of my stuff unplugged from the plug sockets. The idea behind it of course apart from the energy saving is of course safety. If you were in your cabin charging your phone you would hope that you would notice it overheating before it caused any damage. If you were charging your phone you went off for the day who knows what could happen to that. I don't think my phone will overheat. I use an iPhone and I love it. I'm firmly on team iPhone now. Let me know in the comments if you're on team iPhone or team Android. I do remember a few years ago where all of those Samsung phones were blowing up and catching on fire and that would not be good in a cruise ship cabin. So don't leave anything charging. Even if it's an iPhone, don't, don't, leave, it char don't leave anything charging. Another big fire risk for cruise ships is people smoking in places that they're not supposed to. I've seen this happen on a number of cruises and if you ever see somebody smoking where they shouldn't, tell reception, tell somebody, they'll be told off and they may not realise that they're not allowed to smoke there. You might be thinking, what damage can one tiny cigarette do to a massive cruise ship? Watch this video next to find out. This fire was caused by a cigarette butt. <laughs> 